Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, introductory lectures about uh, using HiSys uh, process simulator. HiSys is a process simulator in which we can simulate processes. It is equivalent in a, a symbolic sense to simulators used to train pilots. Why? Because airplanes are very expensive equipment. So we cannot just send them directly into using the actual piece of equipment that we are dealing with. The same thing, if we have a refinery, it might cost four to five billion dollars or ten billion dollars, or a chemical plant may cost us half a billion dollars. So it does not make sense and logic to train an engineer directly on the real field plant. So HISIS is used in cell where you can study so many things. So many things such as what? City state process simulation in which we carry, uh, calculate the material and energy balances for a flow sheet or a sub flow sheet or a complex uh, collection of flow sheets. We can calculate in HISIS the dynamics of a flow sheet. What do we mean by dynamics? It's the unsteady state behavior of that flow sheet. We can use HISIS as a basic design software where we can design small vis uh, vessels such as uh, two phase separators and three phase separators and distillation units and find the volumes of the reactor for a certain type of uh, conversion uh, specification and heat exchangers if we have some extensions to HISIS. But the main purpose for using HISIS is for material and energy balances. So let's talk uh, about HISIS right now. When we start HISIS and look at the user interface in HISIS, what we see is something very similar to Microsoft Office icons. What we have is a new icon uh, in which uh, HISIS calls its files cases. It's a simulation case and the extension of that file is HSC. HSC stands for HISIS simulation case. We have new, open, and save, and since save is not, uh, we don't have a case yet, so it's great. So let's start with a new case. When we start a new case, when we start a uh, new case in HISIS, or when we open a new case in HISIS, depending on the position of that case, the new cases, we are faced with something we call in HISIS simulation basis man manager. What is a simulation basis manager? It provides the basic information that the simulation case cannot be run without specifying. So if we look at the tabs below the simulation basis manager, what we see is components in which we can specify the components in the flow sheet that we would like to simulate. Fluid packages refers to the type of models that we are going to use to calculate the physical and thermophysical properties in our simulation of the flow sheet. Fluid packages refer to mostly equations of state and activity coefficient models. If you recall your thermodynamics, you got something like cubic equations of state such as Ping Robinson, SRK, steam tables, and the water ASME equation of state. In addition, we have activity coefficient models such as Unifac, Uniquark, Wilson, NRTL, Vanlar, and other types of equations of state. In hypothetical tab, we can define materials that are not available in the database of HISIS. Why? Although HISIS has a very wide and extensive database, it still lacks some materials in other, uh, some applications. So what do we do to use the HISIS is we define materials based on their properties and structure. In the oil manager, we can deal with crude oils. In general, we can define crude oils, we can define their assays, 
and use them exactly like the, if they were pure components. In the reactions tab, we can define different types of reactions which are available to carry out reaction equilibria and reaction kinetics. Reaction equilibria, we can find the equilibrium convergence and equilibrium compositions of a certain single reaction or multi-reaction sets. In addition, we can use kinetic reactors in which we can use plug flow reactors and CSTRs to evaluate the performance of those reactors for certain sets of reactions. In the component maps, we can do a little bit of advanced uh, component manipulation and in the user properties we can even define our own properties based on the basic HISIS properties. So let's return back to the components and talk the general, about the generalities. In HISIS the two basic things in the basis manager that you cannot enter the simulation environment and you have to specify are components and fluid packages. You have to specify the components and as in any chemical engineering problem you cannot solve the problem without knowing the components that you have so in general in the components we can see different options available and for a new case the most logical thing is to add a component list the view will be available once you have those component lists delete it means that you can delete the component list that you have copying you can copy the component list import you can save a certain component list and import it back into HiSys and export you can export it and refresh is to refresh that uh, those component lists so the most logical thing to, to do is add in the add what I'm going to do is click the add button Notice, Hisis open the add button, add component list in a new window. What I'm going to use in this case is uh, toluene hydroalkylation process. In toluene hydroalkylation process, we produce benzene from hydrogenating toluene. Unfortunately, as is the case in many chemical engineering applications, we have a main reaction and we have side reactions. The side reaction will produce something we call biphenyl. So, how to find your components? The first question that might uh, arise is, how can you find your components in HISIS? I would like to draw your attention, look at the match text box, around the mouse cursor here and below it look at the filters we have something we call called simulation name or full name and synonym and formula we can look for compounds in HISIS either using the full name if the full name matches something in HISIS it will provide it for you if it doesn't it will provide a partial list of those things synonyms something very close to it Formula, if you have the chemical formula. And simulation name, it's the name used in HISIS. If you know the name used in HISIS, you can use it directly. And there is an option, view filters. I will leave it to the advanced topics later, inshallah. And if we look at the text box here, what we see is a list of hydrocarbons sorted based on their carbon number. They start with methane, C1, ethane, C2, propane, C3, isobutane and in, uh, butane, C, iso C4 and in C4, and so on. And if we go back down that list, we can see so many compounds. In HISIS, there is almost 3600 compounds in that data bank. So most likely, if you are dealing with the hydrocarbon industry, most likely you will find your compound available in HISIS data banks. Otherwise, you can go to the hypotheticals and define it. So let's start. I would like to add benzene. How do I find benzene? I know how to write the name benzene. And if you notice, HISIS gave me so many compounds that have benzene, 
but gave me benzene highlighted in blue here. So this is my compound that I would like to have. So all I need to do is to select it. How do I select it? We have two options. Either double click on it, and notice once I double click on it, on the selected compounds, I have benzene added here. Or, I'm going to remove it now, still selected here, what I can do is click on it and click the add pure command button. It's up to you. I always find it convenient to double click. It's much uh, uh, faster than just clicking two buttons. So I would like to add toluene. In toluene, the first option was toluene. And lastly, uh, uh, not lastly, I would like to ha add hydrogen. Once again, you don't need to type the full name. Notice if I typed HYD, it will give me so many selections. If I keep on writing letters out of hydrogen, notice it's a partial list of hydrogen and Hysis was smart enough to select hydrogen for me and finally what I'm going to use is I need methane and I need the compound biphenyl but I don't know if biphenyl is going to be there However, I know it's chemical formula, which is C12H10. <clears> Hysis <throat> is objecting. He cannot find this. Why is that? Because I'm searching in the full name filter. Not really in the formula filter. And notice, once I get into the chemical formula, it listed... Look at the mouse pointer. All the compounds in Hysis that has, what, 12 carbon atoms and 10 hydrogen atoms. All I need is biphenyl here. And I need, that's all. Those are the four, uh, five compounds that I need for the time here. Once you are done, all you need to do is just close the component list and notice now what do we have here we have the component list one component list one if i double click on it it's equivalent to view let me like, click on view or double click on it it's the same action why is that now we can use hysis without even simulating anything to retrieve information about the physical properties of any compound that we have selected for example, imagine I double click on benzene, which is equivalent to what view component. Either click on benzene, view component, or double click on the compound itself. They are both equivalent. Notice what do we have in Hysis about the physical properties in the data bank of this benzene. The component name is benzene. You will find the component name. You will find its family or class in Hysis, which is related to the filters that you are using. And the chemical formula is C6H6. Uh, the ID number is 17. What is the ID number? Imagine Hysis as an Excel worksheet. You will find benzene in row 17 together with all its properties in Hysis available in that row. So this is what we call the ID of that compound. In addition to the ID, we go to the critical tab. What is critical tab? It will provide you with critical pieces of information for physical properties. What we have in the critical tab is base properties and critical properties. Base properties are properties that need to be available about any compound in Hysis for Hysis to be able to estimate other properties if they are not available. What we have is molecular weight, 
normal boiling point at one bar and ideal liquid density in kilogram per meter cube in this case, which is 882.119 for benzene. The critical properties, remember your thermodynamics, T, it's TC, critical temperature. P is PC, critical pressure. V is VC, critical volume. And eccentricity, it's Pitzer eccentric factor, the omega, uh, if you remember your thermodynamics. In addition to critical properties, we have what size is called point properties. What are point properties? They are properties that are constant. They do not depend on any variable other than the type of compound that we have. So for benzene, we have, for example, the dipole moment. What is the dipole moment? It measures, it's a physical property that measures the polarity of a compound. And if you notice, the value of dipole moment for benzene is zero, which means what? Benzene is non-polar, which is a known fact for many of you from your basic chemistry. So we have so many properties that we can pick from here. For example, if you remember your thermodynamics, for example, uniquack R and Q, they are the volume and shape factors for uniquack to be able to evaluate the activity coefficients and estimate them. I'm not going to spend so much time on this. If you need it, just you can go through this. Now, this is a very nice type, the T-dip. What is the T-dip? It's temperature dependent properties. Remember, we have point properties. What are point properties? They are properties that are constant. They are function only of the compound that we have. But we have temperature dependent properties. Those are properties that are function of temperature. One of the most important properties you will find in the appendix of your thermodynamics box or principles book, for example, uh, Filter and Rousseau, you will have vapor pressure. And notice the term, which is common for many of you, Antoine vapor pressure. If you notice, log of P equals A plus V over T plus C plus D star log T plus E star T to the power F and pressure in those units and temperature in Kelvin and the limits of application of this equation for benzene now you have the A, B, C, D, E and F values to apply in this equation notice this is a more complicated form of the Antoine equation but it still features the Antoine equation for the first three ter uh, two terms A plus B T over T plus C we have the vapor enthalpy, which is equivalent, in a sense, to the ideal gas heat capacity that you will find in the appendix of your textbox. Why? Because you can differentiate the term here with respect to temperature at constant pressure to obtain the ideal gas heat capacity. And notice, same thing, it gave you the equations as a polynomial up to the power 5 in temperature and it gave the constants for benzene. And what is Gibbs free energy? It is H minus TS, which means if you have the vapor enthalpy and the Gibbs free energy, you can find also the entropy for that vapor from H minus TS. Use of properties, you can use it for the advanced topics to define your properties. I'm going to close this tab now, and we can do the same for any other compound that we have. So I'm going to close the components tab, and let's talk about the fluid packages tab. Once again, to the left, we have current fluid packages, and notice it's an empty box, which means what? We did not select any fluid package. And the choices that we have are either add or import. Import, once you can export something, but it's not available now uh, for a new case that we do not have. We did not export any fluid packages beforehand, so I'm going to use add. In the add properties, you can either use the filter, all types, all the fluid package properties, calculation methods in HISIS, or you can use EOSs. What is EOSs? Equations of state. What are equations of state? They are equations that relate pressure, temperature, and volume or density for a certain uh, phases and uh, range of temperatures. And if you notice, many of you have heard of Payne-Robinson 
और एस आर के और एम बी डब्ल्यू आर और ली किसलर लॉकर एंड वी हैव दी एक्टिविटी मॉडल्स एक्टिविटी मॉडल्स सम ऑफ यू हैव हियर देन देर थे डायनामिक्स बॉक्स मार्गुले इन आर टी एल Uniquack, Van Lar, and Wilson. So, I'm going to be, uh, keep things uh, simple here. I'm going to use the thing Robinson equation of state. Later, we will discuss how to select the fluid package. But right now, I'm going to select just the thing Robinson equation of state for the time being. So up to now, what we did, uh, what we have done is we selected the components and we selected a fluid package and notice what we have here. We have a current fluid package that is called basis one in C5 and PP in Robinson. What does this code uh, mean? Basis one, it's our basis calculation based on those components. In C5 is number of components is five. I remember we have entered five components. PP property package, how to calculate our physical properties. We will calculate our physical properties using Ping Robinson equation of state. So we are ready now to enter the simulation environment. Now a uh, question uh, arises, what if I would like to change some of the components? What if I would like to change the fluid package? It's easy, don't be scared. What we need to do to switch between the simulation manager and the basis manager is just go and see that Erlenmeyer flask. Here is the mouse button. I can switch between those two environments using this Erlenmeyer flask icon. So if I click on the Erlenmeyer flask, notice, where did I go back? I went back to Simulation Basis Manager. So I would like to return back to Simulation Environment. So just try it for yourself. <coughs> so let's start looking at the Simulation Environment. What's in the Simulation Environment? If we look, we still have some icons here. We'll talk to, uh, about them uh, later, inshallah. And we still have some icons inside the simulation environment. And we have a palette. What is a palette? It's a collection of icons. Why is that? It contains all the unit operations and logical operations available in Hisis. And in the area here, it is where we draw our flow sheet. So remember, how is this, uh, in its simplest form, is a drawing program. We can draw first flow diagrams using Hysis without carrying out any calculations. But let's look at the palette here. And remember, in your elementary principles and thermodynamics, that streams can be either material streams or energy streams. The blue is for material stream, the red is for energy stream. And the nice thing about ISIS, it's color coded. We are going to talk about color coding later also, inshallah. So if we look at some unit operations, the first unit operation is separator, which is what? It's a flash drum. It's a two phase separator between vapor and liquid separation. Next to it is three phase separator, which is what? Vapor liquid liquid separator. This is very important in petroleum industries and gas industries where you have water, oil, and water. Uh, and gas, I'm sorry. I'm going to select preferentially some unit operations. If we look, we have the cooler and we have the heater. What is a cooler and the heater? They are unit operations in which we can change the temperature or the phase of a stream to a certain condition using an energy stream. We are not interested in the cooler and heater in knowing by which means we are changing the state of that stream. We are just uh, trying to find the duty of that exchanger. We have a natural gas uh, exchanger. We have a 
heat exchanger now it's equivalent to a Schillen tube heat exchanger where we know the four streams the inlet outlet and the inlet outlet of the other side the process side and the utility side we have fired heater here where we have combustion on one side and the uh, process stream on the other side we have a pump here for liquids we have an expander or a turbine we have a compressor and here we have a valve to change the pressure of streams and we have a mixer in this case what is a mixer we have so many streams we combine them together into one stream opposite to a mixer we have a T what is a T or a splitter we have a stream that we split it into so many streams with the same composition in here we have a CSCR in your kinetics you know it's a, a CSCR stands for continuously stirred tank reactor here we have a plug flow reactor and here we have some something as it's called general reactors in general reactors we have Gibbs reactor and equilibrium reactor and conversion reactor in those Gibbs and equilibrium are equivalent one of them uses Gibbs reactor uses Gibbs free energy minimization because remember at equilibrium Gibbs free energy is a minimum and at uh, equilibrium reactor uses the equilibrium constant just like in basic chemistry textbooks conversion reactors we give the conversion and based on that conversion Heises calculates all the outlet stream values while in CSCR and plug flow reactor, we need the kinetics and all of those reactors use the reactions tab in the uh, basis manager. We need to provide the reactions except for Gibbs. Gibbs does not need stoichiometry. In addition to those unit operations, we have a distillation column, which is a rigorous distillation calculation uh, 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 unit operation in which all streams and trays and components are calculated on each tray. We have a reflux absorber which is half a distillation column. We have component splitter. We're going to talk about many of those but just let's explore what's going on right now. So we talked <coughs> can we stop? 